Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much everyone for the invitation today. Uh, I know myself and the rest of the ALMAC contingent with me here today are absolutely delighted to be joining you here to, to in Dundalk with the, to, to sort of bring through this dissemination event to, to an end. Uh, this afternoon, I am absolutely delighted to be introducing you all to ALMAC Discovery and giving you a little bit of a flavour as to what sort of work we've been carrying out to date uh, and how that the BREATH and ALMAC industrial partnership has developed and resulted uh, over the past year or so. So this will be a very brief, very high level overview as to some of the work that we've been carrying out and I'll be talking a little bit about investigating roles for dubs in airway disease using a CRISPR based approach. So who are ALMAC Group and what do we do? ALMAC Group is a large pharmaceutical company based in Craigavon, Northern Ireland with a presence across the Ireland, UK, the US and Asia. The company's chief mantra is partnering to advance human health. And ALMAC Discovery is one of seven business units within the ALMAC Group as a whole. And our work can be best described as an independent research-driven drug discovery company dedicated to the development of novel and innovative therapeutics. So we currently work on a number of therapeutic angles uh, versus a variety of different diseases with, uh, with one of our long-standing project pipelines being the UBplex Dub platform. The UBplex Dub platform utilizes a team of expertise to generate small molecule inhibitors versus de-ubiquitinating enzymes, or uh, dubs in, for short. These are uh, a large family of proteins with roles both physiologically and pathologically. And we are trying to match some of these inhibitors versus disease targets in order to generate potential therapeutics. So as of late 2020, ALMAC Discovery has begun a collaboration with Breath in order to try and investigate the roles for some of these dubs in airway disease. So what are the existing challenges uh, of airway disease and what are the goals for our project? Well, airway disease itself is an umbrella term, really, for, uh, for diseases which cause inflammation to the airways. And these diseases can include COPD, which as Keith pointed out earlier, is ranked third as a leading cause of death globally, uh, as well as other diseases such as cystic fibrosis, which is a le leading life-limiting recessive genetic disorder. These uh, diseases are typically characterized by the symptoms of difficulty in breathing, uh, shortness of breath and coughing, and from a biological perspective, occur due to a loss of activity of certain ion channels, in particular CFTR. Current therapies for airway inflammation uh, are corticosteroids and anti-inflammatories, and uh, are designed to really treat the symptoms of the disease itself. However, extensive research in the field has indicated that restoration of normal airway function in both these diseases can be achieved through either blocking ENAC channels, activating CFDR ion channels, or by activating CFDR compensatory channels, such as TMM16A. Interestingly for us, when we began this project in late 2020, it became clear from a very early stage that uh, rules for dubs in airway disease remained largely unexplored. Dubs themselves work by removing ubiquitin, which attaches to proteins. The addition or removal of uh, ubiquitin from target proteins can affect the function of these proteins for a variety of ways, such as its stability, signaling, trafficking, or protein-protein interactions, and can drive, can drive disease progression under certain uh, circumstances. Effective modulation of uh, ubiquitin via dubs can have enormous therapeutic potential, and importantly, from our perspective, dubs themselves are targetable and therefore are a potential therapeutic uh, in the, for the future disease. Ultimately, our goal was to identify dub targets for the treatment of inflammatory airway disease. So how did we approach uh, screening roles for dubs within airway disease? So once we began this project, the initial planning of the experiments immediately highlighted a need to share new methodologies and techniques between our collaborators and ourselves. The state of the art for investigating roles for new targets within disease is called CRISPR, and our group in, in AMAC Discovery routinely uses technology. CRISPR itself works by removing specific genes of interest, uh, such as dubs themselves, to evaluate the effect of their loss on disease progression. 
In turn, our QB uh, collaborators shared with us the gold standard for evaluating airway, uh, airway disease uh, in the form of the Airway Liquid Inter Interface, or ALI, model. Together, we were able to develop uh, a method whereby CRISPR removed dubs of interest from human primary lung airway cells. Uh, and these dub-free cells were grown up for three to four weeks. The main advantages of the cell uh, model technology is the high degree of physiological resemblance of the ASI cells to actual human tissues, not only with respect to the cell types, but also how the cells themselves behave, such as cilial beat demonstrated here, which in normal circumstances is used to move mucus trap pollutants up and out of the airway to provide a healthy airway. Ultimately, we decided to use this model approach in order to investigate the effect of removing dubs from, from, ion, from the cells in order to investigate ion channel activity. So using this combination of technologies from ALMAC and Queens, we then went on to evaluate the effect of removing the dubs on the from the cells and investigating the effects upon the ion channels themselves. We were able to generate a large amount of data showing that removal of individual dubs had a wide range of effects on our uh, ion channels of interest. And in particular, we identified dub Y, highlighted here in red, which when removed using CRISPR was able to block ENAC and activate CFTR and TMM16A ion channels. This itself was very exciting as it affected all three ion channels in a therapeutically beneficial way and suggested that dub Y itself may be an interesting therapeutic target down the, right, down the line. To supplement this, we decided to value a range of pharmacological inhibitors available, available to us via the Ubiplex dub platform in Almac Discovery and screened a number of hits using these drug compounds, including dub Y. And to our delight, we found that inhibition of dub Y highlighted here in green, once again blocked ENAC and activated CFTR and TMM16A activity. So as a result of this data, we were excited to have identified dub Y as a, as a hit and also to have an inhibitor compound that could selectively uh, target dub Y within our ALI model. So considering the very positive effects of the targeting dub Y had within our uh, COPD screening platform, we next decided to evaluate the effect of in inhibiting this uh, dub within cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis itself is a disease whereby the ion channel CFTR is inactivated following mutation. To date, there are more than 2,000 mutations recorded within the literature, with the most common mutation being the F508 CFTR mutation, which represents approximately 70% of the total CF cases. F508 deletion is what is what is termed a class two type mutation, making it improperly, meaning that it's improperly folded and cannot be trafficked to the surface of the cell where it carries out its normal function. Unfortunately, Ireland has the highest incidence of cystic fibrosis globally, with F508 deletion uh, being the prominent cause of the disease. As a result of this, we decided to investigate the effect of dub Y in cystic fibrosis in a, using a C. Uh, uh, an F508 deletion donor. And interestingly, what we found was the treatment of the dub Y inhibitor once again blocked ENAC, activated CFTR, and activated TMM16A ion channels. As I mentioned before, cystic fibrosis is a disease of malfunction in CFTR, and in its broadest terms, restoration of the CFTR protein can fix the disease. Currently, compounds developed by Vertex are the at the cutting edge of CF treatment with therapies restoring activity of CFTR in patients and alleviating disease symptoms. So we next asked, can dub Y inhibitor, in combination with the Vertex compounds, improve CFTR activity? And excitingly, the answer itself seemed to be yes. Evaluating CFTR activation showed that the combination of the two therapies increased CFTR activity, as shown by the red arrow here. So what does this all mean from a clinical perspective? So despite this all being at an early stage, and uh, a, a, wide, a, a lot of replicative analysis needing to be completed on this work. Our screen has identified a dub target, uh, and also pharmacological blocking of this target has been shown to have a therapeutic benefit in the disease using our models. So uh, just, to very, just to finish on, I'd also just like to uh, highlight some of the benefits and summarize some of the benefits uh, resulting from the BREF-ALMAC 
uh, industrial partnership. In the first instance, from a biological perspective, the first obvious benefit of this collaboration is that there is now a greater understanding of dub roles within airway disease, which has great implications on um, future research. Secondly, these gains themselves and the understanding they've provided would not have been possible for the opportunity that BREATH has brought, for, brought forward uh, and uh, allowed us to share new skills and expertise, expertise between our colleagues uh, at Queen's. And thirdly, as an overall consequence of this collaboration, the work has now opened up therapeutic avenues which were previously unrecognised uh, and will hopefully provide future benefit to patients with these diseases. From a collab collaborative perspective, they say no man is an island. I think the same applies to research groups themselves. And one of the biggest impacts, a huge impact, has been the, of the breath collaboration has been the forging of academic industrial links. Um, this, is, this is the benefit of merging ideas from some of the leading thinkers in the airway field uh, with the clout of industrial innovation and the resources. And as a consequence of the collaboration between BREATH and ALMAC, we now believe we've identified a tractable drug target, which moving forward, we'll be continuing to work with, with our collaborators on. And finally, just to end on, the research uh, opportunities provided by BREATH. So knowledge of the dub roles uh, within air disease was very limited upon the commencement of this project. Uh, now, following our CRISPR screening project, we've accumulated a huge amount of interesting data regarding the effects of removing specific dubs from a COPD donor. Today, I've focused solely on dub Y. However, there remains an abundance of targets which can be further explored, not only from a therapeutic perspective, but also from normal human biology. And this excitingly provides us with an enormous research opportunity for continued work within CF and other diseases such as COPD. So just to end on, I'd just like to acknowledge some of the hard work uh, provided by my colleagues uh, with the guys at ALMAC, Tim, Dan and, and Ian. Uh, our gratitude to our colleagues in, in uh, QUB, Professor Lorraine Martin and James Rehill. Uh, and I would also like to raise a special mention for Kifa Mark here um, from the Dundalk Institute of Technology, who we've also been working very closely with on some potassium ion channel biology, but unfortunately they didn't quite make it into the slides today. Uh, and with that, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, my pleasure to talk to you about some of Almac's work.